So, I believe I missed the devlog. Yeah, I thought this was going to happen, even though I gave myself a month for each episode. I did absolutely nothing in September. It was a crazy while, I'm just... I switched jobs, I'm just learning what I need to do, so it's a bit of a mess, but... I did manage to do a quick little test today. Basically, I wanted to see if I could make something move. No animations, no sprites, nothing, just make an object move. And I did. So for starters, I went to my parent object, which is human, which works both for enemies and players. I need this because I want to control enemies in my game, so if I'm gonna build in commands to move a character, I need them to be shared between player and enemy. They need to be identical, they need to work the same. Which I discovered might be a problem later on, but I think I'll work around it somehow. So yeah. I set a new value of controlled equals zero, meaning if controlled is zero, you will not be able to control that object. I very much changed it for the player where controlled is equal one, which of course will mean you will be able to control the object. As you can see, uh, music, which is gonna be one of the characters in-game and the boss, do not share this because they are going to be immune to the control. Which makes sense because... Uh, I'm gonna explore it a bit in the lore, but... It's gonna make sense because they are, they are two people that are more powerful than you. So it would make no sense for you, who would basically be a noob in this situation, to control them, that would just make no sense. Making an object move is, at least in Game Maker, pretty simple. You just pick which key you press and write in a command inside. So I wrote here, so here I wrote object human that y equals object human minus speed alteration which is another value I added plus walking speed. So the speed alteration I added because I wanted to be able to slow you down when you sneak or speed up when you're sprinting. Makes sense. And I thought the best way to do that would be if you press shift, speed alteration goes up. If you press down, speed alteration goes in the negatives, so it lowers the overall sum. And then you take that value and either add it or remove it from the current position. So that's how you move. And yeah, this is the part, I don't know if you saw what the text said, but this is the part I realized where my controls might be a problem, because if I have, let's say, 20 entities. When I press left or right, each of those, each of those 20 entities will have to check, is the control status on this entity 1? If it's not, they won't do anything, if it is, they have to move. Problem is that that has to happen for every frame of the game. So they constantly have to check, so I cannot have like a crazy number of enemies on screen in one time. I have to, even off screen actually, I just can't have them rendered. Because if they are in, I am screwed. Because 
all my computer resources will have to go to checking am I controlled. So five or six enemies in the area that should be okay. More than that I, I really don't want to try it. And considering the setting is gonna be one big industrial building, five or six enemies in a room to control one guy who is potentially dangerous, makes sense, but clustering more people in one area would not have any effect. Maybe in some bigger rooms there are gonna be more enemies, but I'm gonna try to keep it a lot of small little rooms in like this one industrial building or something like that. Maybe an abandoned building, but with a lot of small spaces. So yeah, here you can see me experimenting as to how I'll add the if controlled, but I wrote it in I wrote in the script for key down shift and shift is gonna be the sprint button. Because I want to left and right keys are gonna be moving, shift's gonna be sprint, down's gonna be sneak. And up I have some interesting ideas about up. But it's gonna be purely a keyboard game, no mouse clicking needed. That is my idea now at least. Well, that's basically all the code for the day. And the comments I wrote before, if you read them, they're just actually notes for me as to what I want to talk about in the video, but I already covered that. So, the only thing left to do was to try and run this little experiment of mine. But as you'll soon see, I did that very poorly. I did add a sprite on the wrong object, mind you, because I wanted something visible, of course. You need to add a sprite to have something visible. But I added a sprite on human, which should never be in the game, because human is just the parent, the enemies and the... what's it called? Player. They need to be in the game. The second mistake is that I added this to the game screen instead of the pause screen. Why this is a mistake is because the pause screen is selected as the home screen, as the first screen you get to. And this is the result of all of my mistakes. Nothing was visible. Then I went back to fiddle with the setting some more. I realized my mistake, but I only realized I added the instance, the object, to the game screen. I didn't realize I added the wrong object. Which resulted with this. The object was there, but it didn't move. And it didn't move because control is default on zero. Because that's gonna be default for the enemies. And I needed to add player, which of course I realized later, because player has controlled defaulted to 1. So of course it should be movable. And in the end it was, although I did have some little hiccups with that as well. As you can see Y is the vertical axis. I needed to add or remove value from the X axis to move it. And considering I very badly implemented the the down key, the sprite just started slowly drifting off the screen. So a bit more coding, a bit more tweaks and I fixed it. Of course I fixed the X and considering my press down didn't work I realized that that of course was wrong because here it only says speed instead of walking speed. Speed is a built-in value I believe and messing with it is something I don't want. I don't want to mess with the values and commands that are built in for two reasons. I do not know them very well. Knowing them would make this whole ordeal a lot easier. 
The second is I want to use this game as a bit of a refreshing course for myself to I'm not gonna say relearn coding but just remind myself of it all the tricks all the problems and as you can see shift works perfectly down however did not because it kept being active that's when I realized that adding a key up command so when you stop pressing something is gonna be necessary because when key is up, the value should be restored to default. The speed alteration value, I mean, should be restored to zero. And that was the last change I did today. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little devlog and see you in the next one. Or you can watch some of my other videos.